See, ladies and gentlemen, God has a sense of humor. I did not know that it would take a Lego game to actually be able to see exactly what it is that I predicted would be happening in the market. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of context because I think it's very necessary. Some of you might be watching this video for the very first time. Over the years, PlayStation and the fans have, in a sense, put themselves in a really precarious situation. Well, I think it's more of us PlayStation fans that did that. We concluded everything about Xbox with different measures and different standards. But these measures and standards I'm talking about today are the standards of devaluing the Xbox console. I've seen for you know a while now PlayStation fans, my fellow PlayStation fans, saying that Xbox has devalued their console by actually taking their games to PC. It hasn't made it healthy for their platform. They needed to compete and be exclusive, just how PlayStation had been, in quote, exclusive. Well, at the end of the day, after all the talking and all of the posturing, guess who used to always claim that their games were going to be only for the PS platform and then eventually made the move? PlayStation themselves. Remember that June 2022 article that reminded us of that tweet all the way back in the day that got deleted? Remember when, you know, at the end of the day, when you go back and try to look for this particular tweet, you'll never see it. But thankfully, the Internet is one that doesn't really quickly forget. So even starting from back, 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 back in the day, this particular standard has been very interesting. So <laughs> they've been using the tweet to pretty much clean Insomniac's clock. Now, in all fairness, you know, I don't think they knew that this change was going to happen, nor did they foresee exactly what it is the industry was changing to become. Now, in my defense, I saw some, you know, statistics from uh, MPD Media that actually showed that the PC gaming industry was growing. And then in 2018, I made a video where I, where I titled Spider-Man should come to the PC platform because PlayStation could leverage that growth for its own platform. It's not because of anything special. It's just simply because of the change in the industry. Since then, a lot of PlayStation fans have kind of pivoted. They've said, well, it doesn't seem like these games are going to come day and date. So Xbox taking its games day and date, that's a change of the standard. You see how it changed. That's a change of the standard. They said, so day and date games will now be the standard that everybody should play by. Now, some people decided to follow and take those, you know, particular, uh, you know, standards and use them. Me, I ensured that I made them capitulate and say, well, before we actually start this new go post that you're shifting, let us all acknowledge that you've considered that point and PlayStation has basically lost the plot or you have lost the plot because PlayStation doesn't seem to care what the fans are over here saying. They're just doing what they need to do to go ahead and make money. Well, then they did that whole shenanigans. Well, now we have a game that's coming to the PlayStation platform. It's a day sorry, the PlayStation, sorry, from PlayStation to the PC platform and also to the Nintendo Switch platform, which simply, you know, is a twofer. What it does is it brings a day and day PlayStation game that is not a live service game. Remember, we actually had to go through the live service one. Oh, well, you know, if the game comes day and day to PC, it's a live service game. So it doesn't really matter because PlayStation already said that they're going to bring live service experiences day and date. That is nonsense. The moment they brought the first live service game, game day and date it was over because you didn't even have to bother anymore because remember y'all shifted that goalpost from when they said the games will never come to the pc or xbox platform only for now the games to come day one and it's like well it's live service at that point the conversation was already over but i'm playing you know i'm just i'm taking the bait and i'm playing the game whenever people say these things and it led to a comment where someone said in on my channel you're being disingenuous at best. It's not the same thing, and you know it. Oh, it is absolutely the same thing. It's always been the same thing. I've just been, you know, waiting for the industry to continue to shift so that we can continue to just watch you take that go post and run on wheels everywhere you go. All Xbox games are day and date PC launches. Okay, what does that mean? So, so is that a new standard until PlayStation brings all their games day and date? If you're wanting us to use that standard, no problem, but we must first concede the Insomniac tweet standard and say, well, that standard has been capitulated upon and PlayStation has already lost that particular plot. Or I guess I'll say hardcore PlayStation fans have already lost that plot. 
That's exactly what we need to look at. They're bringing a full slate of games to the biggest competitor, PlayStation. Oh, that's another new standard that you're talking about. Well, here it is. The LEGO Horizon game kind of checks off that box that they're bringing their games to their biggest competitor, Nintendo. All these people now want to make Xbox seem like they are now the competitor. Do y'all remember when they kept saying that Xbox was number three? How is Xbox number three and now the biggest competitor? <laughs> Xbox is getting a promotion and a demotion every single day. One minute they're a monopoly, next minute they have no they have no uh, teeth. They're just a, a silly company. It's all bark, no bite. Next minute they're a competitor. Next minute they're the biggest competitor. And Nintendo was there the whole while, sitting going, "What the heck is going on right now?" The goalpost cannot stay in one place. But here I am taking my time. I'm almost confused. I'm keeping track. I'm taking notes. I'm saying, okay, here's what the goalpost is. I'm putting the coordinates there. And then before you know, I look, I'm like, what? The goalpost was here just now. And look at the coordinates. I check the notes and it's not in the same place. It's simply because many cannot just go ahead and say the industry is changing. I'm also a PlayStation aficionado, but I'm not really, I've never really been a fan of exclusives. But I can understand if you're first party, you know, and if you're making a game, that game can be exclusive. But second and third party exclusivity, that thing is going to eventually evaporate a bunch of studios. PlayStation doesn't know what it's playing with. I mean, those studios themselves, they need to watch out for themselves and they need to realize that if their game doesn't have availability, then at the end of the day, they're going to pretty much suffer. So this comment from this audience member and all of the above was just very interesting as well. Let's go ahead and finish reading the comment and then I'm going to go ahead and show you something that I think has been kind of like the silent, uh, you know, uh, killer in terms of this argument that I've not deployed yet. But, you know, it'd be nice and it'd be fun to see it. They said there are no games that are off limits for PlayStation ports. How do you know? Phil Spencer said that not everything. Don't expect every game to show up. He's basically put a limitation there. But you see, these PlayStation fans, y'all want to go ahead and believe something that you just think is. That's the thing. You think everybody has to actually, you know, follow suit because you believe something. When we're over here telling you, no, that's not how the world works. Maybe in like, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe some other galaxy, you, we can do that. But on, in the Milky Way, you know, we kind of follow these, you know, standards and such. Now, it says, contrast that with LEGO Horizon Switch port. PlayStation is not porting their IP to their biggest competitor. My dude, we don't care if Xbox is what you say their biggest competitor or not. Nintendo is basically their biggest competitor because they maintain a very similar paradigm. They literally keep exclusivity in their own platform. They don't do the subscription services like Xbox does. Xbox is now competing almost indirectly with these two and is going after Apple and Google. All this talk you're saying from an economic and fiscal perspective, it's all kinds of nonsense. You're not going to see God of War, Last of Us, Uncharted, Ghost, blah, 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 blah. They wouldn't even port, P you know, IPs that, you know, they own and aren't made by first party studios. Helldivers 2 is a genre uh, that needs as many players as possible to be successful, yet you don't see it at X on Xbox. As much as you want to push this narrative, it's not the same. See, you're saying all this, but you know Bungie is about to release Marathon on every platform, right? And I will come back and I will smack this argument because, again, you're not paying attention. You're arguing from an emotional perspective. You're not taking a look at exactly what's going on. I don't need to do any work. The market will do the work for me simply because the market always does the work. It always sifts out all the nonsense and bad practices that are actually existing in a specific industry as long as there's competition, which in the gaming scene, it's fierce. It's insane. Indie developers have access to basically the exact same tools that AAA studios have always had access to for a lot of money with things like Unreal Engine, with tools for out there like Blender. That's all you need. It's literally the salt and pepper of making video games. I work on video games. I can tell you that with a high level of certainty. We haven't gone outside of Unreal Engine to make anything, nor have we gone outside of Blender and Maya to make our assets. Oh, we just buy them on the marketplace, modify them, and that's a lot of what developers have been doing. They basically do that because that's exactly what the ecosystem is. You don't need billions of dollars anymore to make a video game. You just need sweat, a little bit of, I don't know, according to, you know, the Slavs, you need a little bit of that vodka, the, ma the magic in, in that, and you're able to pull off a game, which has always been possible. I mean, but, you know, uh, we've just seen a lot of studios with a lot more grit do it. So, again, this particular context is actually very, it's, it's fading very fast. And I think it's very frustrating for people who have, you know, in a sense, hedged a lot of their bets on the fact that, oh, this kind of shift is not going to happen. The shift is happening. It's very small, but it's, you know, oh, I said it's very small, sorry. It was small at one point, but it's become really magnanimous. 
And again, for those of you who've been saying, well, these are not system sellers, here's what I got for you. If these are not system sellers, then what's this chart doing here? You see, for the longest time, I've kind of like just, you know, smiled at these comments and I've said, what do you all mean by system sellers? The system sellers that they mean are these com you Remember the comment that we just saw just now where they said God of War, Last of Us, Uncharted, Ghost, Horizon? My dude, a lot of the PlayStation community buy their PlayStation to play these games that you have on this list. I would argue that these are the system sellers. <laughs> <laughs> because they simply don't stop playing these games when they buy their systems, right? Because this is the majority of where gamers are spending their time. We saw a system seller in Marvel Spider-Man 2018. That game was what sold the consoles like that year. I know God of War 2018 was probably, you know, an attractive factor. But don't get me wrong. I Spider-Man 2018 was where I saw PC players cross the you know the the pond and go buy a PS. I saw my buddy. He like he jittered. He was like, ah, and he went and bought. He's a PC player all his life. He bought a PS4. Then they brought out Spider-Man 2 and they made a critical error. They removed it from the PS4, expecting for PC players to go spend five hundred dollars again. That's when they lost the plot. That's why Spider-Man PS2. Has taken a severe hit. If it was on the PS4, it would have continued its sales pattern as much as the you know the, the first game did because a lot of folk, like 60 something percent of the PlayStation ecosystem, is still sitting on the PlayStation 4. So this chart tells me that most PlayStation players enjoy MLB the show, they enjoy EA College Football, they enjoy NBA 2K25, they enjoy Grand Theft Auto, they enjoy Fortnite, they enjoy Call of Duty. Uh, even the Hell Divers that you were talking about is on PC. We're waiting for Mr. Matt, you know, Mr. Uh, Matt Biscatella's data for the week ending, like say maybe even September ending, because this data is from almost a month ago, but that's usually when the data shows up. It comes out a little late. But believe you me, he's been publishing them for a long time, and we're still seeing the exact same trend because you can look at, say, the ranking as well, as, as well as the, the, the ranking of the previous week, and you will see that there's almost kind of this weird ebb and flow where all of them continue to pretty much do the exact same thing. So I'm happy about this LEGO game. And for most of you that you know think that this LEGO game is insignificant, you don't get to dictate this new standard. No, 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 because the standards are set. So now if we want to dictate a new standard and say, okay, Xbox is not porting its games to, you know, sorry, PlayStation is not porting its game to Xbox, then we'll say, okay, no problem. Maybe we'll wait and maybe they'll never do it. That's all right. But remember, the standard was not that. That was never the argument. The argument was that Xbox was devaluing its platform by publishing its games on PC day one and also by publishing its games to a competitor. In those two particular paradigms and those two standards that PlayStation fans set, it has failed. If now you want to say Xbox is porting all their games to PC, then PlayStation is porting all their games to PC. They're just doing it one leg in, one leg out. It's basically now a timed exclusive and everybody is caught on and it's faded away. It simply faded away because at the end of the day, if you go look at, say, God of War Ragnarok and you look at the way that it's actually selling, you're going to realize that mm, it's not really pushing a lot of you know copies like 2018 did when it showed up on PC, simply because now PlayStation is now you know, pretty much running a race against time. It's running a race against time. There are other games that are out there that are going to outsell it after it comes two years. No one's interested in paying you full price. Actually, few people are interested in paying you, uh, you know, full price for you to bring a game two years down the road. That ain't going to happen. Now, if you're going to bring your game to the PC platform, day one is where you're going to see success. Helldivers 2 saw success. I mean, it's already, I, I've been telling a lot of you, you've been saying, well, it's going to devalue their platform. Yana, 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 yana. Helldivers 2 saw a bunch of sales. God of War Ragnarok, not as much. You see all that, you know, padding and everything, it's all gone. It's no longer a thing where you can basically load it over PC players. They all played Elden Ring, so their eyes are open now to what a good game can actually, you know, be like after such a long time of, you know, really good game drought. So thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you guys with time and audience. Again, we're not shifting this goalposts. We're not going anywhere. We're just kind of, you know, basically taking charts, and I'm keeping receipts of how the goalposts has been shifting for a very long time. Appreciate you guys. Peace out.